And welcome back to the Highly Original Podcast. I'm Joe Martino. Michael Ioneri. And we're back in the Bren Mar studio. Right. So Mike has fully recovered from, from his COVID. I, I am recovered. I, uh, I'm looking above water now. You know, yeah. Before I was drowning, but now I'm above, man. I'm feeling good. Everybody's feeling pretty good right, right That's now. great. That's great. And you were able to uh, you were able to celebrate Thanksgiving with your family. Yeah, everything right. went so, great. So yeah, you aren't you weren't like quarantined for that. No, no, no. Luckily not. We uh, I literally tested uh, negative the day before Thanksgiving, and it was just kind of like such a nice relief. Maybe two days before. I have, yeah. I have COVID brain right now. Is what I read on Google. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, great, and yeah, I mean, I I had a nice Thanksgiving as well. Got to see the family, and and everything. Um, but yeah, I, so real quick, I do want to go uh, before we get started. I want to run through. We we have some pretty exciting announcements. Right. Um, Mike and I are really happy to announce that we are going to be bringing merchandise uh, available to purchase on. What's the website we just bought? I just want. Yeah. I, I feel you. You you arrange that so you get to announce yeah, so, it. So uh, it's it's not public yet. Okay. But it, we do own it, and we're gonna tonight. We're gonna really beef it up tonight. Do all the little graphic designs, and the highly original podcast dot com will be live. Let's say. Yeah, we. Definitely, yeah. definitely, I'm going to be really involved in the graphic design. That's Look, definitely not going to be all Mike. I'm a we <laughs> kind of guy. I like to say we. Because everything we do here at the Highly Original Podcast is, is teamwork, and we have a lot of fun doing it. So we are going to do this. No, definitely, definitely. I'm I'm really excited about the merch. We actually, right. we both got beanies tonight, and we have a we have a demo shirt uh, right behind us. So, yeah. It's looking good. Uh, man. Another, another announcement. Um we're gonna we're gonna try to experiment a little bit with the format, so we're gonna put our nostalgic topic at the beginning of the episode. We're gonna do this for probably the next two episodes, just kind of see how it goes, and hopefully with some listener feedback, see if if you guys like that format better or if you prefer our traditional format. Right, and we yeah. appreciate all the feedback and all yeah. any criticism, anything you got, because we want to make a better product for you guys. Yeah. So definitely reach out to us. Let us know if you like the new format, yeah. and we'll keep it going. Yeah, and uh, as always, you know, uh, we're still selling ad reads. So if you or someone you know has a small business or art or music that they want to get out there, uh, DM us on Instagram, and we'll set you up. For sure. So with that, Mike, I think we're going to go right into our, our nostalgic topic today, which... Is I think one that that you and I are both very excited about. Oh my god, for sure, man! And that is the crime drama Breaking Bad, AMC's Breaking Bad, which was created and produced by Vince Gillian, and of course that started in 2008, kind of around. I'd say, Mike, I was thinking about this when AMC really had like I, I don't know, I, like a like a renaissance or, or like sort of a yeah. a, a spike of, of producing great series like Mad Men, right. The Walking Dead, and Breaking Bad. I mean, yeah, it was sort of these the yeah. kind of like, you know, kind of like premium cable type shows that they brought to basic cable. Right. And, and Breaking Bad was certainly one of them. And as you guys, you know, well, I, some of you guys might not know, Breaking Bad is... Uh, a as I mentioned, a crime drama, and it revolves around uh, high school chemistry teacher Walter White, and it's set set in Albuquerque, New Mexico, around 2008, 2010, and he is, you know, he lives like this suburban life with his his wife, his son, and they are expecting a baby girl, and and eventually, you know, the, the, he has a, has an infant daughter, and. Walter is diagnosed with cancer, and this really throws him into a, a spiral. And he's worried about how am I going to provide for my family? Uh, like, what's going to happen if I die? Right, his son RJ is disabled. Uh, yeah, the, the daughter on the way, like you said. Yeah, like, and he's a high, he's a public high school chemistry. He's not right. like they have a lot of money saved up. Right, right. You know, he's middle aged. He's still working. He's not anywhere near retirement. Right, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And he, a little car wash going on, but yeah. even then, I mean... 
but he was really struggling to find out how he's going to take care of everybody. But he is a brilliant chemist. We and we later learn on he he could have been involved really uh, with with this company, but but I think he he chose to exit it before they really took off. Uh, you know, he, he's a really brilliant scientist, but even though he's teaching the chemistry. So what he decides to do after, I think, going along on a ride-along with his brother-in-law, uh, Hank, played by Dean Norris. Dean Norris. Uh, he he sort of gets the idea of cooking and selling meth. And... His, his idea is he, he basically reaches out to a former student of his uh, named Jesse Pinkman, played by Aaron Paul, who, as you guys may have learned from two episodes ago, he also he voiced Todd on BoJack Horseman. Right. Uh, so, so Jesse was, it was a kind of like a delinquent student. I believe he even, like, dropped out. Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. And now he sort of like an amateur... Are, are very low-grade meth dealer. So Walter kind of reconnects with him, and they go into the meth business together, and they slowly begin to grow into, you know, the premier Albuquerque meth, I guess, dealers or distributors. Yeah, uh, like, they really grow a, a, an empire, and they encounter all these different cartels and gangsters and, and all, all these all these underworld figures and that's that's sort of the the basic plot there so I was, I was kind of to get our discussion really going uh, I want I want to talk real quick first about like the impact of the show okay. now I didn't watch the show when it first came out because I, I was probably like too young my mom probably would have would have put an end to that pretty right, quick, right. like she did with The Walking Dead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, and it actually, honestly, man, took, I, I'm a little ashamed to say, it took me two or three attempts to get into it. I watched the pilot, like, twice before the third time I actually got into it. Like, I, for some reason, really? and the pilot is pretty, like, yeah, compelling. It is. It is. I was you know. Instantly. Yeah, like I, there was just some. I was just like, ah, I, I can't. I'm not feeling it. Right, right. But did, did you watch it from its beginning? I did not. No, I watched okay. it on Netflix. Yeah, man. no, same. I didn't even ne- watch it on AMC. You know. Yeah, Netflix. Like, like years later, actually, only about like a year or two ago for me, I, I, I watched the whole series. To be, to be honest with you, the last time I, I watched and like I binge watched series, I said about five years ago. Oh but, really? But I binge watched it like three times. Yeah, yeah. I loved it so much. The the actors, the 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 story, the everything was just like so compelling, and you just you get sucked into this universe, this alternate universe. It's truly amazing. And it really like one of the things I because I, I didn't mention at the top of the show, uh, Walter White, the main character, is played by uh, Brian Cranston. Uh, who up until then I really only knew as the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. I feel like a lot of people. And that's really yeah. quite a different, um, quite a different role that he has. He did from, commercials back in the yeah. day. I know he did like. Well, he was also in Seinfeld. He was in Seinfeld. He played a. Yeah, he had a recurring yeah. role in Seinfeld as like the, the dentist. But would you say Walter White uh, was his like breakout moment of like, wow, this guy is a star? Like. I feel like it really. It opened a lot. Like people were like, "Wow, he's a he's an act. He's a brilliant actor." Phenomenal. And Phenomenal. I think he he got a lot more, like, he started getting different roles, like these more serious roles. I mean, now I'm not an expert on Brian Cranston's career. I could be wrong, guys, but I, I feel like I started seeing him in other projects uh, after after Breaking Bad. Right, right. That was like the Agreed. real. But yeah, I mean, I do remember this show, even though I didn't watch it as it as it as it was coming out, like that it was. It was a big show. People loved it. It was critically acclaimed, and it was as I kind of mentioned. Like I feel like one of the first, like I feel like it was one of the first cinematic shows brought to like basic cable, like the like an AMC type channel not an HBO exactly and exactly. I have heard it said to be to throw back to uh, our episode 9 you know where we did the Sopranos 
a lot of people say, you know, The Sopranos, like, we had Breaking Bad because of The Sopranos and, and what HBO was doing. Like, so this is sort of almost like a success. It was kind of like, okay, we can make movie quality shows that people right. will watch. And Mike and I were watching some clips before, and I'd say, like, they, they kind of got away with some pretty yeah. pretty gruesome really? things. Like, I, I was and surprised I mean, for that... AMC, yeah. though, I mean, you know, considering The Walking Dead, I mean, Fear Fest they would have. And yeah. Like Fear Fest. I guess, but... But, uh, but I do agree, like, you see some of these, like, gunshot scenes and then... And... Wow, that man. are very, very yeah, like very, gruesome, like not realistic. not just like you know, like you would see on like CSI, right, like it's, right. No, these you know. are very, very like, yeah. vividly detailed, you know, and and kudos to the special effects people and and, and everybody involved. No, yeah, definitely. Um, but I guess kind of to start breaking breaking down Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I want to ask Mike. I want us to, to list our favorite uh, protagonists. Okay. And I don't want to say, like, you know, heroes, because I feel like this is this is a show, like, you know, again, similar to, like, a Sopranos uh, type show where there isn't... The protagonists are not necessarily good guys. Right, right. You do have some good guys like Hank uh, and, and, you know, Walter's, you know, his... His wife and, you know, Jesse's parents that are, that are like yeah, good, right, good people, right. but you, you know, there a lot of the protagonists are are villains exactly. themselves. Yeah. Not for sure, man. So yeah, I guess, I guess who would be your favorite protagonist? My favorite protagonist, I'd have to say, is Hank Schrader, and uh, like you said earlier, played by Dean Norris. I I I I would get the chills when you know, and, and I don't want to. Obviously, people watching, they they're it's spoiler warning. Uh, yeah, I, I loved when Hank would like just walk on that thin line of almost figuring out that his brother-in-law is Heisenberg. This right. can, can you just talk about he Heisenberg? T Walter tell them. White, yeah, Walter White. Heisenberg is his alias. His, yeah, his drug you know dealing alias. And and I loved the chemistry that they had, and I loved to see how. You know, Hank was a really good guy. Like, Hank was a really good guy, and he wanted the best, and, and it's just, I mean, he, to me, he's my favorite and, protagonist in that show. No, yeah, and I really liked Hank, too, but I, I like how he was sort of a counterpoint to Walter. You know, he was a kind of a classical manly man type exactly. guy, yeah. whereas Walter was, you know, kind of... He wasn't a nerd, but he was, you know, he was a science guy, and he was, you know, not not as like strong and imposing. And he was a he was a high school chemistry where Hank is a DEA agent, right, right. You know, like so. I I did like. I feel like there was some kind of opposites going dare on. I, there. Dare I say Walter? Or a dichotomy. Was the right, right. Like you'd say Walter was the brains and Hank was the bronze of that. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like that's. I'd agree with you because that was really how it was emphasized in that show. Yeah, and and I liked. Yeah, Hank, Hank was, he had some good, because he like, meant well, but he was kind of gruff. Yeah. Like, like, like when he takes, doesn't he take Walt Jr. to, to like, the, the meth neighborhood to scare him out of doing, like, drugs? Yeah. Remember that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, does, like, yeah, like, very, he, very... Yeah, he's, like, not, you know, he means well, but he can kind of... He can kind of cross the head, yeah, cross he's that line like, of, like, all right, it's a little too much now, you know. But as, as what you were saying, like, yeah, he's always kind of just, like, just on the cusp of... Of figuring out, yeah, yeah of cracking the code of who Heisenberg is, you know, the, yeah. this, this meth dealer that, you know, he's trying Who to has do. taken Albuquerque by storm, like, For he's... Sure. Yeah, I mean, and like, then... Because part of part of it is is Walter White is able to create his own brand of meth, which is like completely clear and blue, blue and it's yeah, and it's like the it gets you the best, you know. I mean, it, you know, meth, it, it's meth, you know, it gets you the best high, and it, right, it gets, right. it's you know, it's like the most, it's the greatest meth ever. Ever, yeah. Just you know, as Basically, as dark as it is to say that, but. Um, yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's. I think that's a that's a great choice, and I think I think Dean Norris did such a good job. Yeah, he was phenomenal, conveying that phenomenal and, in, in that role of uh, Hank. 
Yeah, and he's he's almost become a little bit of a meme. Too. Have you seen those like yeah, things where, some, like, where he's like has all those like different facial expressions? Dean Norris, yeah. like his face has been like black and white images <laughs> of him like smiling and then being all like, like, gruff. So that's been good. Uh, you know, I say yeah, he's my pro- he's my protagonist. Choice, okay, so he really looked like always, always on that thin line of figuring out who Heisenberg was, and I always felt that was <laughs> such an entertaining aspect of that show. Yeah, I mean, for me. I'm going to go with more of an anti-hero in the show, is where you went with a, with a, a, a morally good a character. Hero, right? I really liked uh, Saul Goodman, played by Bob Odenkirk. And that is uh, that's Walter White's lawyer that he gets, like, once he, he's really in the, the drug business and... Like essentially, Saul Goodman is like one of those lawyers that you see on TV, like the 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 accident lawyers. Like they're very like kind of low gimmicky, like. budget, yeah, gimmicky, yeah. like you know. And he's he he's like he's like a sleaze ball guy, you know. He's yeah, like, I think he even put commercials out, like oh yeah, playing this like character. And it really is a character because he um. He he his actual name isn't even Saul Goodman. Like he he changed it in order to sound Jewish so people would like because because you know like the the whole kind of stereotype of Jewish lawyers. lawyers right, right. And so that, that that kinda tells you a lot about his character. He's he's like a he's like he's a scammer and he's you know, and he what his commercials he's always like in like an oval office, yeah, he's got American yeah. flags and stuff. <laughs> like it's, he's like so corny, and I just find him to be uh, very. He reminds me of the character of uh, Captain Louis Renault from Casablanca. I don't, know, I don't know if you ever seen that, Mike. I, um, I de- of course, everybody I hope heard of yeah. Casablanca. Yeah, I, I can't say. But that he, lie. I, he's, he's like, like the he's... French policeman in that who's like. Some like kind of like amoral. He's very opportunistic. Yeah. But like, in the end, he does have like a, a baseline of what's of morality. morality. Right. And you do see Saul um, get show that a few times. There are a few times where he kind of calls Walter out, like kind of just like like this is too much. Like, like this isn't right. You know. Right. We just saw a, a scene where. Uh, you know, there's a, there's one point where, where Jesse and, and Walt sort of have a falling out and, and Saul's in the background and he's just clearly uncomfortable and just doesn't, he knows that this has gotten way out of hand and it's not right. Like, like, you know, and I think Bob Odenkirk did such a great job. Yeah, without, without, without having Yeah, he's not, he doesn't even talk in this scene. And you know what he's thinking. Yeah. You know what he's feeling. Yeah, I, I just, you know. In the background, and, and, you know, Jesse's pretty much saying to Walter, like, I, I know you want to kill me. Like, like, do you either not want to talk to me or do you want to kill me? And he's in the background, and he's just like, man, this is not right. Like, Yeah, and I, I believe, uh, yeah, like, Bob Odenkirk is, you know, he, he comes from com- com- comedy. Comedy, yeah. Comedy sure. world. He was, a, uh, he was a writer on Saturday Night Live and the, uh, the Ben Stiller show. And he also wrote for uh, Late Night with Conan O'Brien, which I did know because I'm a, I'm a big Conan fan. So right. I, they right. they have they have a pretty good friendship actually the two of them. But yeah, so I always liked him. And, and there was a spinoff called Better Call Saul, and I'm gonna touch on that briefly. I didn't watch too much of it, but I'm also not a prequel fan. And I, I just I said this to Mike. I probably said this on the podcast before. I feel like they take away from the character like like we, i already have my idea of saul goodman right. and where he came from i, I don't you want you to ta- yeah like I, yeah i like right. i like that there's a little mystique in the character like i don't need to know how he became a what he is yeah, right. I, I you know but it was critically acclaimed and i you know i'm very happy for bob odenkirk and, and all the crew that were able to work on that you know i'm not i'm not trying to not trying to take away from that so my next question is who do you think is is your favorite antagonist? Because throughout the series, 
as Walter and Jesse climb up in the crime world, they meet more and more outlandish criminals that right. they are, I mean, that they part often that they partner with too, which is like it's not like people who are trying to like get rid of them. It's like their their own business that. partners are like crazy. Exactly, uh, man. I I'm gonna have to go with Tuco Salamanca, played by Raymond Cruz. I think that character Tuco was just—he's—he's he's one of the first he, yeah, real big he's bads that, that Walter White kind of meets, and and he was so just uncanny, so like loose cannon, such a like a psychopath. I remember like one of the first scenes of him is him crushing yeah. up the meth that Walter broke. I think that's him. good. Yeah, he was a psycho, but like he would just burst out and, in violence. And yeah, and he'd like take a line of like of like meth and then just like. Go nuts also, one of the shirt. best dressed characters, I think, in the show. For sure. I think but, he had yeah. snake skin shirts. <laughs> yeah, he has some of the best shirts. He really did. But, I mean, but he was, dude, he was such an over-the-wall, crazy, nutty character that you just didn't know what to expect. Like, when something wouldn't go his way or when something went his way, you wouldn't know. Like, how's this guy going to react? Like, this guy is the ultimate psychopath, yeah. sociopath, narcissist. This guy is nuts. And it... I, it what kind of calls to mind, and I think this touches on, I think some of Brian Cranston's good acting and the character development of Walter White, uh, is when Tuco just starts. I think he beats him to death. One of his like associates, yeah, one of the people him. in his gang, right. and I think it's the first time like Walter really realized like, like, because Walter's in his Heisenberg, uh, you know, mode. He's acting all like Heisenberg, and Tuco just starts beating this guy, just senselessly and and walter like his face drops and he's right. just he's jarred by it because he's realizing like you know because walter as we mentioned he's not from this world this world yeah, and, and... but he's acting he's he's playing the part and there's still a part of him that that is a high school teacher from the suburbs like right, and you kind of see that come out yeah that scene. like you see heisenberg kind of fade away that alias go away and you see walter white like wow and, like, what is going on here where am i and like some of my favorite scenes would be like that where you would see walter trying to be heisenberg but walter was breaking out a little yeah. bit as he would be trying to like hey, hey wait, you, you, you need me like you know when he's trying to right Trying to be make peace with with like during these confrontations, he's like trying to be firm, but he's also there's fear, like you know. But yeah, no Tuco, I, I think yeah he was yeah he was a he, scary guy. He was crazy, and, and and the way he went out, I'll be real quick. The way he went out was just so oh, yeah. tense, and like I didn't know, I didn't know what was gonna happen, man. And and he definitely got his comeuppance. He oh got yeah, his comeuppance. Yeah, man, his cousins. His cousins are pretty frightening too. Yeah, his cousins. Oh, the twins. His uncle. His well, uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah, uncle yeah. had like a whole backstory <laughs> of like just gave a yeah, criminal like yeah. life of. But yeah. Tito, what was his name? Tito Salamanca. Hector. Hector Salamanca. Hector Salamanca. Who, by the time we uh, see in the show, he's he's like paralyzed and all. He can really he's in a wheelchair and he communicates through a bell. Right. Like a bicycle bell from his hand. Right. Right. That's sort of. Uh, so I think I think he like he he also has cancer. Yeah, he's on yeah, oxygen. He's, he's on too. oxygen. He's very yeah. very ill. He's, he's, he's but he's still scary. He's, he's in a wheelchair. He's like frightening. Because this 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 horrifying guy Tuco looks up to him as his yeah. uncle, and he's like you know sh shows compassion towards him. And uh, so I'm gonna go for my my favorite I'm antagonist. Sure I'm gonna say Gustavo Fring. Okay. Who is um, becomes I'd say one of the one of the more enduring bad guys of the show, I'd say. He was kind of the big... Well, I don't know. Would you say he was kind of... He's kind of the the biggest bad guy. I think, yeah, he definitely like, was. I think he had the most pull yeah. in terms of uh, reach. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He could kind of be anywhere. And, yeah, and, and that was like the thing. Style. Gustavo Fring, who was played by uh, Giancarlo Esposito, I, I think brilliantly. Right. Um... Yeah, so he he is essentially he has like a fast food chain and a laundromat as a cover, and he, he the thing that that Gustavo he would be Gus, you know, when he's like happy American entrepreneur, and right. he's like, "Hi, I'm Gus." Like you know, he was all like friendly, 
But like when he would be Gustavo, the the drug kingpin, like I think Giancarlo Esposito like really brilliant athlete. His he would change his face structure right. when he got serious and became boss. And there are even times where he gets really angry. Uh, you know, Gustavo is is supposed to be from Chile. He starts to talk with an accent. Most of the time he doesn't, but when he gets angry. He starts to talk with an accent, and I think that's such a good, like that little detail was such a good like acting choice. I'm not sure if that was a, the director or if that was uh, Giancarlo Esposito, but it, I, I, like you can't you can't go wrong with something like that because it really just like, adds such an aspect of realism to that character. And and like you said, like to see his face change almost like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Yeah, Bob, yeah, like no, that's a no, that's a great yeah. yeah. The transformations uh, were like scary sometimes because you'd see this like. Really, like you said, really nice entrepreneur, like yeah. Mr. America, like living yeah. the American dream. And then, man, you'd see this, like, you know, yeah, buttoning up his tie. He's and, essentially a Chick-fil-A manager. Right. And then he's, like... And then he's, <laughs> <laughs> like... A terrible man underneath yeah. all that, you know? And, and Yeah, I mean, I'd say one one of the scenes that I think really illustrates him is, is, is he's having a confrontation with with uh, Walter and Jesse, and he wants to kill Jesse. He never trusted uh, Jesse because he, he, Jesse uses uses drugs right, right. on and off as well. Right. And and, and uh, Gus really, you know, the, I think at the first meeting with Walter, he says you can never trust a drug addict. And he says that in reference to Jesse. Right. And instead of killing Jesse, Gus takes a box cutter and just slashes one of his henchmen's throats. And it is it is sudden, it is like violent, and he's just like straight faced. And it I think that is what I I think when I watched it, I was like, oh my God. Like yeah, it was it's, it's like jarring. And like, it is. It's, and it's just you know, uh, yeah, I think it's over the top, it's intense. And, and that was another thing. Gus mostly orders hits. So that was even more right. shocking to see him actually do something do some himself. Dirty, yeah, like you always see him more so, just like you said, ordering hits like this quiet. Yeah. Well, he doesn't like to get his hands dirty. He's very proper. Right. He, you know, he might his character might be like a little bit of a germaphobe almost. Uh, you yeah, know, I'd see that. Like, yeah, because he's always like, like you know, tying tie, up his yeah, suit, yeah. tie, you know, right, right, washing his hands, you know. And and I think that was all. I think that was all purposely written. To, to really emphasize that character and make that character a living, breathing, believable being. I mean, essentially, because those little mannerisms and, the, and, and like, the accent when you would get mad, you just, you, without that, I feel like maybe Gustavo wouldn't have been as menacing as he was because he wasn't physically menacing looking. No, but no. But with those Again, Chick, Chick-fil-A manager, like yeah, we're no, talking. I mean, I'm, I, yeah, and... like. Really, I, I think that really sold it, and kudos to him too. No, yeah, I, definitely. So, I guess for our, our final like discussion point, Mike, I think this is interesting. When did Walter break bad? When did he, like, when did he actually become a bad guy? Right. I, I mean, I'd say personally from. It's a very philosophical question. Right. right? No. You could argue as soon as he decided to sell meth. Like, I, yeah, I think when he starts stealing, like, the, the chemistry equipment from the school, like, and he starts using it, I think that's when he breaks bad. I think that's when Walter White kind of ceased to exist for a little bit. And okay. Heisenberg is born, and once Heisenberg is born, Walter White never is the same. Never. Okay. I think from that moment on, and, and there was a lot of moments where you could say, oh, he broke bad there. He really just became... I think the, I think when he made that initial choice, like yeah, no, I'm going to sell meth, like I'm going to make meth and distribute it. I think that's when he broke bad. Okay, see, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with more around like season two, when his cancer goes into remission, and he he continues to do it, right? Because I think okay. you know, and, and kind of around when he 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 lets uh, Jesse Pinkman's you know, who's his partner, again, his girlfriend, he sees her dying, and he just lets it happen. And I think that, like, we're starting to see, like, because it, it, it stops becoming a means to, 
provide for his family and ensure that they're going to be okay in his death. It becomes, he likes it, yeah. and he wants to be the best at something. Because, uh, you know, he feels like he missed out on that big company that his college friend started. And right. it was sort of, he was involved with the, with the beginnings of that. And I feel like there's resentment in him. And, and he, like, he wants to be the best. He wants to be the, a brilliant mind. And, right. and he, he is, but he's using it for, 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 for you know, yeah, well, for crime. Not, right. And yeah, I'd say I'd say around that time is when he when he starts just continuing to do it to be the best and to really you know grow his crime empire. Like there's even a scene uh, towards the end of the series when he's talking to his wife and she says, you know, I want I want to hear you say that, that this was for the family again, and he says like I did it because I liked it. Yeah, so yeah. Like, he's like, I was good at it, and I liked it. Right. You know? That was very telling of, like, wow, this guy, it's not so much to, it's not so much, like, he needs the money anymore, he's dying, he has to secure this. Yeah, because he gets millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, $80 million buried in the that's And that's not even all of his money. Like, that's. You remember the one scene where it was, like, literally, a like, a. Two queen size bed yeah. fools of like I'm just oh, yeah. Well, that's the scene with Bill Bill Burr. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bill Bill Burr, who is a guy, you know, one, as you guys might know, he's a famous. He's one of my favorite comedians, but he he plays one of Saul Goodman's like kind of lackeys or right, yeah. something. He has he's a recurring role, but yeah, yeah that's nothing, that's nothing, the scene. Yeah, nothing too crazy, but he was definitely a good touch in the show. Yeah, right now. Oh, he, he, it's Bill Burr. For sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, Bill Burr, he's hilarious and he's also a great actor. He really is, you know. Yeah, no, he yeah, he's good. Uh, he has a show called F is for Family on Netflix, animated show, really good, guys. Really good. I, I recommend it. But I guess I guess Mike to round out our discussion on Breaking Bad, I wanted to touch on on I, I think like the one of the ending parts of the series, one of the final the final boss, which is the uh, you know Jack Welker and his neo Nazi yep. gang, and when Walter gets involved with them and i think i think what the, what the the neo-nazis really represent is just like kind of walter's complete like just it represents how far he has fallen that he's willing to associate himself with, with, with neo-nazis because right? unlike the cartel unlike gustavo fring like they have you know they have their their white supremacist ideology. They they see themselves as like soldiers and and right. stuff. It's not just like, you know, amoral business. Yeah, no. You know, like it's so it's like a pride. It's like a yeah, just a, and, a mindset that. And you know, I think in the beginning of the show, I feel like Walter would not have associated with them. No, he would have no. been like, I'm I'm not. I can't work with with, with Nazis. Like yeah, that's no, what they are. Yeah. Like, but I think I think by see, like. That the symbolism of them, I think, really symbolizes just how depraved his character has become. That's a fascinating point. Yeah, uh, truly, that's a fascinating point, man. Because he, he seemed to deal with all these different crazy people, but none of them were as sick as Jack Walker's neo-Nazi gang. And I mean, to, and and he he basically essentially reached out to them to have Jesse killed. Yeah, and. I just think that's that really shows like you said the depravity of the situation like what happened i mean i know he's this huge meth dealer but what happened to walter white like, yeah what happened to him? yeah he's like gone he's, yeah, he's gone it's, and just it's very very i don't know there's a lot that goes on with that. which is like a you know which is a tragedy too because it's like jesse pinkman and, and walter sort of have a father-son relationship um that group. Which is interesting because it's like you know they're they're doing such a bad thing, yeah. and what I always liked about Jesse is I feel like Jesse, despite doing bad things, I feel like he does not completely lose his all of his morals or his humanity, quote unquote. You know, right. Right. like Walter, like you know there, there are parts where Jesse has to do things he doesn't want to do, and, and you could see that it really eats him up, whereas. I feel like Walter has an easier time putting on that mask, k- killing his enemies. Yeah. He right. does; it doesn't bother him as much. Yeah, Jesse usually cries. Like he usually yeah. gets torn apart. He does it. not want to 
Yeah, because he's a low-level drug dealer. Yeah, and no, begin- he's, he's, you know... He's not this, you know, he's not what... Well, I mean, he, he ended up becoming... Yes, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, but... He, but yeah, not because he want Like, that wasn't his goal, you know? I think it just fell into his lap. And yeah, he, he was like a slacker. He's yeah. not, you know... And he figures, you know, he has... He already has an addiction. I mean, heck, exploit that, too. Exploit that avenue. Yeah. Like, wow, here, unlimited supply. No, which I yeah, I think there, there there's a there's a really good scene with with Jesse, with his addiction when he he's going to AA meetings, yeah, to sell, to to the people there, right? You know, or, or it's, I guess it's not AA, it's not Narcotics it's, Anonymous yeah, 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 or, or something, yeah. and, and he rehab, he like. breaks down and really is like, you see, he's conflicted because he's like he's like I'm just here to sell all of you drugs, you know. And uh, yeah, he he has a con- conflicted, yeah, conflicted right. storyline, and, and he you know breaks down the session. But he also has a sequel movie called El Camino. Of, yeah, so that so his his story does continue outside of the series. If any of you guys are interested, in that. I think it's, all of it's available on Netflix, I believe. Yeah, I think the whole yeah. Union, yeah, I think it is. yeah, all, all three programs. So that's El Camino, Breaking Bad, and and Better Call Saul. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, I think that kind of rounds out that, that discussion. Of yeah, I, no, I, I agree. I think, um, again, a really brilliant show. Um, but it can be can be violent and, and, and jarring at yeah, times. Yeah, you know, if, you, uh, if yeah. you're not used to, you know, seeing some pretty intense stuff, this may not be the show. Because <laughs> yeah, usually it's very sudden, too. Yeah, it's yeah. not like... Like you said with, yeah. with, with Gus, just taking the razor blade. And, just and Tuco just beating... One of his so quote unquote brothers is his members of his cartel to death. Or um, you know, uh, Danny Trejo's <laughs> yeah disembodied <laughs> head tied scene. to a tortoise. That that, that that was awesome. Like oh my god. <laughs> that was one of those scenes where I just remember I, I saw that and I was like I will never forget this initial yeah. reaction to that scene for as long as yeah. I and I never have I never have I never will. Yeah. But yeah. So uh, with with that I guess yeah go watch Breaking Bad. Yeah. For uh, sure. But, uh, so, the, uh, you know, so now what I want to do, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain the format here. So, you know, guys, we usually do kind of like, you know, not, not important topics before the nostalgic topic. We're going to do that at the end. So now now we're going to be to that section. Okay. And I won't announce that every episode. Don't worry. I just want to talk them through that the first that. time. You know, what's to be. viewers and listeners we have out there. What's the high exp- Oh, the high. Highly original podcast. That's it. So, Mike, the the last thing I want to talk to you tonight about is annoying drivers. Oof. So annoying drivers grind my gears. Dude. What is what's like the worst type of driver for you when you're on the road? The worst type of driver yeah. for me is when you know you're rushing to get to work or you're just in a rush. And, and you got like five cars in front of you and you see that one car leading the pack going like five miles under the speed limit. And you're just looking and you wish you could honk mm-hmm. and you wish the honk would travel all the way to the front but you're like, you know what, I'm not going to honk because there's somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Me. I think that's like, it's not their fault. No, it's not. Yeah. It's, that, it's, the, it's the Rudolph Red Nose Ranger. Yeah. It's the leader of the pack. It's yeah. the slow tortoise. Little, you know, back to the journey to Danny Trejo, the tortoise. Yeah. I, yeah, that a slow driver to me when, you know, if it's 25 miles per hour, go 25. Go a little over 25, you know? If it's 30, go 30. Don't, don't go 25. Yeah. No, yeah, go the speed you know? limit. Go the speed limit. Don't cut people off without blinking. I'm a little surprised that you, a Jersey driver, is saying go the speed limit. And you know, you know what's crazy? I spend most of my years driving in PA, though. Oh, like, uh, really? Uh, all right, all right. I, I guess. I'm a Jersey driver. I guess that makes sense. If you were, it's fun. You were it's trained fun. here to drive. I was, yeah. I was trained to be yeah. against PA drivers, but now I'm yeah. one of them. <laughs> but I, I would say I'm. Oh, I'm gonna. I think I can beat you, man. Okay. And it's people who, who stop, to turn, essentially. Oh, man. Like they slow down, nearly to a stop. To turn, like, 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 not at Route Three on Westchester. Yeah, just anywhere, right anywhere, there. anywhere. You got me beat there. No, I, 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 it's. You got me beat. And I was, um, I'm actually gonna shout out my friend Pat, who who I've talked about before. He got married. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, he got married. I guess 
nearly a week ago. Right? Yeah, it was last Saturday. So by the time this comes out, a week ago. Okay. And I was uh, I was driving out to where, where he lives. And, you know, it was a big stretch of road. And I felt like there was, there was like at least like three or five stop turners. Oh, man. And I, it's just... I find it to be like the most irritating. Now, most irritating thing. Like I, I had an inc- I had an incident today actually driving. Yeah. And I was on Westchester Pike and I was going, you know, I was going forty miles per hour, fifty miles an hour, you know. Yeah. And someone just like screeches to to twenty to turn, and then like you yeah. said, they stop. Completely stop. Yeah, so no. Like going five miles per hour at this point, and I have to slam on my brakes. The guy behind me has to slam on their brakes. Like, just just turn. Like, don't don't speed and turn. But just turn properly. Just turn. Like, yeah. It's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't understand why why so many people do that. But, yeah. I mean, so th- I'd say that's one of my one of my biggest or, pet peeves. Yeah. Or how about the driver that'll, you know, you're going the speed limit. You're even going a little over the speed limit, and they got to speed around you, but then you both end up getting stuck at the same light. See, that doesn't irritate me. That, like, amuses me. <clears throat> I like that. You like that? Because right? I, like, I like seeing them stop at a red light. Right. I, that I, happened to me like the other night. I pull to the lane next. If it's a two lane, I, I like to pull right next to them so I can look at them and see I, I I kind of did that recently. I mean, oh, I had to turn, so I just happened to be going there. Right. But I like I looked over, and I was just like, yeah, like, right how does it feel? Like, yeah, like you're you know. embarrassed. And they never look. They never usually look. Yeah, like, I, today, actually, on my way here, I saw someone on, um, on, uh, what becomes the Westchester Pike? It's still on, still in Westchester. Like he went from behind a couple cars from behind me, went through a parking lot, like sped through the parking lot, and then went to the other side to turn out to get ahead of the red light. It was like it was, right. it was, that's, it was some like some movie, yeah, that's like, Fast and Fur- yeah. Fast and Furious kind of stuff. This is all about family. It's all about family. Family and aggressive driving. Family and aggressive driving. Yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely annoying. That's Yeah. I, I, I think when anybody kind of misuses their privilege of, of driving an automobile, I feel like when anybody kinda screws up, you know what I mean? I just think, come on, like you gotta look at them like what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean you know you're yeah. a mechanical horse and you just don't, you're doing it all wrong. You're not, you know, you got your life in your hands, maybe your passengers, pedestrians, and you're just being stupid. You're being foolish. You're, you're stopping a turn. You can cause a whole bumper to bumper collision behind you, you know? You're going too slow. Someone's maybe got their pregnant wife and they're trying to rush to the hospital, but no. Nope. You want to go for a cruise. Five miles under the yeah. speed limit in front of them. Yeah. No, it's just, I, yeah, it makes me, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to convey into words. It, it really does. Irritate me a lot. So yeah, man. I just want—I just wanted to touch on, on a little yeah, fun, was, little I fun, know. little subject, little light nice subject. To, nice to get that out there too. Yeah. Kinda, you know. So if you stop and turn, just stop driving. Yeah. I mean, stop it or just stop driving. That's that's what I'm gonna say to yeah, you. Get an Uber. Yeah. You know, just get an Uber or you know, go into an empty parking lot and learn how to learn how to turn. Drive and turn. Learn how to turn. Learn how to turn. Yeah. Here, here, folks, on the highly original podcast. Learn how, how to, to turn. turn. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I mean, that, yeah. So that that's kind of that's that's what I want to do. Uh, just a little pick your brain about that. And I think with that, um, do we have anything to announce for the end? We got our we got our shirts. We got our. We got the website. We announced. Website. Announce soon. Uh, um, I guess I'll mention. So I. Real quick, just to, to top off the show, you're going to be very excited about this. Oh, yeah. Like, I know you will be. My tail's wagging. I, <laughs> my mom, so I was you know, I was talking to my mom during Thanksgiving, right. and she mentioned, you know, my mom's a big supporter of the show. She listens. Right, right. And she was saying to me, Mr. John might appear on the Highly Original Podcast, if asked. Hang on. Mr. So, John. Mr. Yeah, John. The, the Mr. John. Why haven't we asked him, Joe? Uh, well, well, guess what I did? What? Today. I, I actually... Did you? Uh, you didn't. 
I stopped over at their house and I spoke to Mr. John. Mr. John, my man. And is, uh, he, is he coming on? Well, I have to talk to him more about it. Okay. Talk to him more about it. I'm excited. But he didn't man. say no. He didn't say no. He didn't say no. Listen, so, yeah, if you listen to this, we welcome you to the High Visual Podcast, you know? At, please. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it would be it would be great if it happens. So I got to work on that. Okay. okay, you got me really excited there, man. That was a nice yeah. surprise. Yeah, so I just wanted to leave you guys with that, that yeah. little thing, uh, yeah. you know. And uh, with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Please remember to follow us on your preferred streaming platform and follow us on Instagram. Share us. Tell everybody about us. And uh, keep 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 uh, keep uh, posted for our for our merch. Yeah, it's coming very soon. Is that what people say? Keep posted. Uh, keep posted. Yeah, stay posted. Stay, stay posted. Stay, stay tuned. That's stay what tuned. I wanted to say. Yeah. All right, all right. So with that, have a good one, guys. Guys, take care. Dennis.